Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining the second webinar on Good Information Systems Equals Easier Data Sharing. Uh, this is Lia Greeno with Interaction. Um, our first webinar was in late October with Jonathan Garrow of the American Red Cross, who shared information on their new database, Efficient Collaborative Operating System, or ECHOES. Uh, and today, two of our colleagues from Heifer International are joining us to present on the evolution of Heifer's project planning, management, and m and &E system. So we have Ileana Resendez, pm and &E Technical Manager, and Stephen Northcutt, uh, Enterprise Solutions Manager with Heifer. Before I turn it over to um, Ileana and Steven, I just wanted to give you a quick bit of background on the series, which may continue. Um, hope, hopefully, um, I can get your feedback on that at the end of the webinar. Um, but as I, I mentioned in the, in the last webinar with the American Red Cross, as part of our work on NGO Aid Map, we've talked to many of our members about the process they're, they're using to share their project information on NGO Aid Map. And just so you all know what you're looking at on the map, this is uh, Heifer's project information. Um, they have uh, 205 active projects around the world um, that they've shared information on. Um, and and in those conversations with members, we we know some organizations are struggling. Others have a much easier time sharing data. Um, and several organizations have expressed interest in knowing what others are doing in terms of their information management systems. Um, so these webinars are meant to showcase organizations that have developed information management systems that make that process of sharing information much easier and, and more efficient. Um, so for our webinar today, we'll have Ileana and Steven presenting for about 25 minutes, and then we'll go to Q&A. Um, as usual, you are all on mute, but you can ask questions by typing them into the question box, and then I'll post them on your behalf when we move to Q&A. Uh, please feel free to type your questions throughout the presentation, um, and I'll make sure to keep track of those. So um, Ileana, Stephen, with no further ado, I'm going to turn it over to you. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm Ileana Resendez, as Laia already introduced me, and I'm the pm and &E Technical Manager with Heifer International. Um, just. Uh, Two seconds of my background. I've been with Heifer uh, for over three and a half years. And uh, my academic background is in economics. I have a bachelor's in economics, a master in public administration, and a master in economics as well. And my previous experience, uh, it's on performance management. Stephen? Yeah. Um, hello. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Stephen Northcutt. I'm the Enterprise Solutions Project Manager for Heifer's Information Technology and Services Department. Uh, I've been with Heifer about eight years now. And my background is mainly in information management, uh, technology, uh, network administration, uh, things like that. OK, um, before going to the uh, management information system, we just want to share with you briefly um, some history about Heifer, some basic information about Heifer. Um, Heifer's mission is to work with communities to end hunger and poverty while caring for the earth. So Heifer works with the small-scale farmers, mainly women, to reach their full potential. So Heifer believes that with the right tools, training, and livestock, small, farmer, small farmers can improve their livelihoods. One of the main tools or the critical tools that Heifer uses for development, for community development, is the 12 cornerstones. These 12 cornerstones are the guiding principles that communities take uh, as, a lay, uh, as a layout for the framework for change and development. Um, and these principles can be easily adapted to each community that we work on. Uh, one of the main or the key cornerstone of the 12 that we previously mentioned is the passing on the gift. The passing, with the passing on the gift, the families um, commit to pass on the gifts that they were uh, given by Heifer or through, uh, through our partners, and um, they share the benefits of this of these gifts with their neighbors. 
And as, as in exchange, the neighbors are also committed to continue this tradition of passing on the gift, creating a multiplier effect. Um, Hefe right now works in 30 countries, in four continents, in the Americas, in Africa, Europe, and Asia. And now transitioning to the project management information system, um, I wanted to start this conversation by sharing with all of you the organizational needs that took us, uh, that took the organization through this, um, yeah, through this, uh, evolution of the systems. Um, the, two main the two main organizational needs were the, the need for accountability and transparency and the importance of uh, results-driven decision-making. So in order to reach accountability and transparency, Heifer identified the need for strengthening project and monitoring, uh, project monitoring and evaluation in order to report to stakeholders, especially or starting with project participants and all the way to, to our donors. And then in order to um, make a results-driven um, decision-making, uh, we saw the need to strengthen project management methodologies in practice and, of course, uh, having the platforms that will enable those practices. Um, this will ensure the, effect, the efficiency and effectiveness in the use of resources to achieve Heifer's mission. And, of course, all throughout uh, considering learning as one of the most uh, lever or the leverages to achieve both of the, of the organizational needs. So the first uh, solution that Heifer adopted as project information system was uh, PPD. We call it PPD, which stands for Programs Projects Database. This application was hosted uh, at headquarters, Heifer headquarters, and it was mainly a database to store, organize, and report on International Programs Division. Um, the, the functionalities allowed by this uh, database was to uh, store or organize, like, like we mentioned, project proposal information, progress reports, and financial information for each project. And it has some uh, reporting functionality. Um, this, is, this is extracting information and analyzing information, and it was mainly focused on comparing plans, project plans versus the actuals and how the, pro the projects were progressing against the plans. Then a couple years ago, in 2011, Heifer adopted a second solution, which uh, we call PPMIS. It stands for Project Planning um, Pro Program Project Planning Information System, and this was the first um, global organizational system, meaning that all the users in the organization were able to access, regardless of their location, uh, they could uh, access uh, concurrently to this solution. And this solution was uh, a web-based custom build for the organization. So Heifer worked with uh, some developers and they helped us um, materialize all the ideas and the needs that we had in order to plan and monitor our projects. So the functionalities that PPMIS had were project proposals. We were able to track all our projects in this, in this system. We were also able to report progress of these projects. Um, however, the reporting was mainly focused at the activity level. And then one of the functionalities that it was uh, that um, you know, that was one of the most significant changes with this with this uh, solution was the capability to report or to build uh, ad hoc reports. And through this through this feature, we were able to provide information for the 205 projects that Maya was pointing out earlier, uh, because it allows us to just do one extract of data in a very easy way, and then provide that information to interaction through their batch upload and then uh, publish that information in the maps. So just to 
briefly show you how PPMIS, the solution that I just described, work. Um, this is the welcome screen that we had. It was a very um, simple and easy to use uh, system. Um, the user would log in and then the user will be allocated to one country and, well, the typical country user, of course, uh, we have different permissions and different roles that allow for check and balances, but this is the case there. The case that I have here is just for one country user. So they were able to log in and then immediately go to that um, um, country and see the projects. In the welcome page, we, the user was able to see a dashboard. Uh, this is a, a breakdown of the projects by status and by the type of project. And uh, the, another good feature that this project, that this um, solution offered, was the um, easy search, just by project number that we could we could type there. So. Uh, as I mentioned, the main, two, the main three areas were project proposals, monitoring and evaluation, and reports. So um, we had project proposals or projects by different type of projects. And this is the menu, how it looks like when how the users were um, entering projects. Once they selected by the type of project that they had, um, they could go on and start filling out the standard templates for project information. Now, uh, you can see here that all the different types or, or all the different tabs are different um, types of information that were required, but some of them were mandatory and some of them were flexible depending on the type of projects. Now, something important for us was to define which fields were mandatory and which fields were flexible. So um, throughout the implementation, or even before, before the implementation, we developed the system guidelines that help us define those. So we leverage on those guidelines a lot throughout the training and implementation and throughout the life of the system. Um, that helps us a lot to, to improve data quality and keep the standardization. So here you can see basic project information. Um, project type, name, number, location, and then we all can, you can also see some of the other sections such as membership criteria that's uh, families assisted and the criteria to select the families that will be part of the project. Uh, you, you can also see training, training information, monitoring and evaluation, project plan, and so on. Um, on the m and &E side, we had the two main functionalities, what, which were uh, progress reports and project stories. So similar to project proposal in uh, monitoring and evaluation, the user was able to, once the project was created, of course, on the project side, then uh, every six months the user could come to this section and should come to this section and enter the information related to progress. Um, the three main areas, as I mentioned earlier, or the three focuses here, the areas of, of concentration here in this progress reports were project information, and in this case it refers to the number of families or individuals assisted, and inputs, livestock and resources placed, and trainings. So this is how the um, screen for families assisted looks like. We have the number of families and then some carryover information from previous periods. And then it also allows for um, some description or comments related to the progress. And the screen, you cannot see the full screen here, but uh, it also allows for um, families assisted and individuals assisted based on Heffer's methodology uh, for original and past zones. Pass -ons, as in the cornerstone that I described earlier today. Um, this is the screen for livestock and resources, which are inputs. And um, what I thought it was um, important here to share with all of you is that Heifer offered the, or the, this system offered a long list of resources. We had resources for every single project. However, um, we wanted to, to maintain the standardization, of course, for the system. So 
Kefir had, or here at HQ, the administrative, um, the administrative people had the rights to the rights to increase the list of resources as they were needed. But of course, we already have the the guidelines on what exactly or how exactly we were going to grow that list so that we could keep it standardized. And then uh, the last screen that I'd like to show regarding monitoring and evaluation is related to the trainings. Uh, the trainings were the same thing. We have offered or have offers a variety of trainings, but uh, we maintain this list of trainings following the same methodology that in resources or in inputs. Um, it could grow, but um, as, as needed by users and control at HQ level. Reports. And this is the last feature that I want to share with you from, from this solution. Reports, as you can see here in this menu, we had a couple of reports that were standard uh, for to answer standard questions or recurrent questions. But then one of the most uh, beneficial features that this system offered was the capacity to develop ACROP reports. So for in this solution, it was called Query Builder. And um, just wanted to share briefly with you how it looked like. Um, this, func this functionality allowed for the user to select from any field and combine with uh, any other field in the system um, to present the information as it was needed. So we could use this feature to report on an annual basis the number of families assisted which is a standard question that, that, we, that we get every year. Or we could use this feature to answer specific donor requests, such as the number of cows placed in the, the specific country during the specific year. So it was very useful. And as you can see, there was no need to, to master or know SQL. And it was very easy to use. We could just, um, just select the variables that were needed or the fields that were needed. And then on your right hand side, uh, you can see that it was also possible to filter or to narrow down those searches by different uh, criteria. Um, once those uh, queries were created, uh, one could save the queries for future, for future reference. So um, the efficiencies gained with PPMIS was um, to introduce a culture of change in project reporting. What I mean by this is um, it, it transitioned reporting or project reporting, it transitioned from being a requirement and a checklist for, especially for country staff, you know, something that they needed to, to do to be in compliance with H, HQ. So it was now seen as a, as a ben benefit for them as well because they could use that information since they could also access that information they could use it you know to track country progress project progress even pull reports and present that information for proposals or some other type of information so that was a big gain uh, we were also able to standardize planning information and monitoring and reporting and then something very important uh, for the organization it was the improvements in data quality. Why? Because the information was entered at the field level. It didn't have to come to all the way to headquarters and then enter the information here after some lags in, in reviewing that information and data entry. So the way the data quality improved was uh, in timeliness, completeness, and accuracy. Completeness and accuracy was achieved through a QA process that we had uh, consistently um, and throughout the life of this solution. And then finally, uh, with, this, with this solution, what we, one of, another gain that we had was the capacity to capture lessons learned and identify all the needs at, from different stakeholders. So with that, we developed a roadmap for project management information systems and to evolve to the, to the current solution that we have. So the current solution that we have is um, Chemetrica, that's the name. And uh, this uh, solution was based, as I mentioned, on the lessons learned from BBMIS. And 
what this solution offers is project management, um, which these, by these we mean a lot of things, but I want to point out that uh, with these we're able to develop a schedule baseline, scope baseline, and a budget baseline, and of course track them throughout the life of the, of the project. Uh, we're also able to develop uh, flexible monitoring and evaluation systems. So what this means is uh, we're able to meet requirements at different levels, as well as to develop monitoring systems to meet the special needs of, of the projects and interventions. Uh, we also learned that we, it was important to transition from activity level reporting to results-based monitoring system. And um, this solution, Kimetrica, will also accommodate for, for the organization to um, introduce the agency level measures that, uh, has, that the organization has developed. Uh, these measures were not embedded in systems before. Um, they were just, they would track separately, but this solution will incorporate them. And uh, something that we learned and we, and we uh, implemented this time is that um, we built from an existing solution tailored to the NGO's world. So this is, uh, um, this is a shift from building, from previously custom built solutions, the two, the two that I already presented were custom built for the organization, and this time we went out and found an expert in system and also uh, an organization or a vendor that was already familiar with the NGO world. So this is how the project looks, the, the system, the solution looks like. Um, it allows, uh, here in this menu, as you can see here, it allows for to set results, which that is the scope baseline that I was mentioning, uh, set targets for our results, uh, define risks, define the risk indicators, and uh, through those elements, then of course we build the logic frame. Um, here in this menu, you can see that we can create budgets and uh, project plans. So that is budget schedule, budget, uh, budget baseline, and schedule baseline. And of course, we're able to track and manage throughout the life of the project. So, and from from the M and E side of this solution. You can see in the menu that um, that there's capa a capability to develop forms, um, associate questions to these forms, um, rules for validation, and then manage indicators. Well, uh, what this allows this this something really nice that this system offers is the possibility to link those indicators that were created on the project side when we were defining the scope of the project, and link them all the way to the forms of course, through variables or questions, and then create also the algorithms that will be used to calculate the values of those indicators. And uh, finally, um, this system, of course, also allows for reporting. So some standard reporting and some custom reporting can be created. So just to Stick to the time, the 25 minutes. So briefly, we want to share the lessons that we learned through this journey of uh, the three different systems. Uh, it has always been very important to work together, PM&E and the IT. We can we can translate to each other the needs and the solutions, and that is so. That's always been a key for success. Uh, it's also it's always been also very important to get the support from leadership to ensure full adoption at all levels. Um, one of the most important inputs for development, meaning um, solution development, is to um, consider the feedback and recommendations from all the users, but especially from the field staff. And, and uh, another point, uh, very important, is uh, users will always need uh, support. So it's really important to, to be available. This is during implementation, during training, after, etc., uh, being available through different ways um, can be calls, webinars, platforms for collaboration, support via Skype, etc. That's really important so that they won't stop the work that they are doing. 
Um, in, um, the next point is standardization and clarity in the process and requirements. Um, I, this is, has also been critical so that the users are clear. What I mean by this is develop guidelines, clear guidelines on the use of the systems um, and specify to users what flexibility ranges they have to work with. And, um, and of course, so that they can make the best of the solution. Right? It's always with that in mind. And finally, exploit the, the recommendation that we have is to exploit the efficiencies gained with all the stakeholders. Uh, what I mean by this is not just you know talk about how good we are. No, of course not. What I mean is um, use or, or yeah use use uh, the data. In this case, the data for decision making at all levels and at all time. I think that's. Uh, that the best thing one can do to actually gain buy-in buy on the on the implementation of new systems and solutions for um, information. And I think that's that's all I have. I don't know. Oh, sounds good. Yeah. Wonderful. So later, uh, thanks very much, Ileana. Uh, the questions have been pouring in, so I'm going to move straight to to the Q&A, and um, I'm going to try to organize these into categories that, that groupings that make sense. Um, but first, just a couple of clarification questions, um, just so people are are clear on what we're talking about. So the first, the first two systems were entirely custom. Um, made uh, for Heifer, correct? Correct. And the the new Kimetrica system is going to replace the PPMIS once it's ready, is that right as well? That's correct. It, we're actually uh, going through that transition. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, perfect. So those clarifying questions out of the way. Um, there's, there's a couple of questions about um, how you involved your field staff in the development of the system. So first, what, pro what process did you use to engage field staff in the feedback, recommendations? Um, this person uh, says that they struggle with overburdening the field with staff, uh, or overburdening field staff in the development process. Um, and then if you could also comment on any challenges you might have had in rolling out this system to field staff? Okay, I'll take the first question about involving the field staff. Uh, in, in terms of the PPMIS system in Cometrica, one of the things we did was to involve the field staff, uh, identify the key users of the, of the systems in the field, and bring them into a, a workshop, uh, a feedback or a pilot workshop, and show them early stages of what these systems can do and what we are trying to accomplish with those systems and allow them to use the system, play with the system, gather their feedback, gather their recommendations and their wants and needs for that system, take that back and use that information to further develop that system as we went through the development timeline. We also involved the staff with mailing list. Uh, so they could be a part of that development process. So as we work through issues in the system or we brought up a new feature that they recommended we try to do, we kept the staff involved through a mailing list. Uh, we've done that with two different systems and it, uh, it worked out fairly well. The staff felt involved and they felt that their concerns and their recommendations were heard through the entire development process. Um, can you repeat the second question? Um, just any any challenges you might have had in, in rolling out the system to field staff? Uh, there's always challenges. Uh, one of the challenges we faced was um, the, the language of the system and also the connectivity of the system to an extent. Uh, those were two that we, we struggled with sometimes. Uh, a lot of times our programmatic staff didn't have a lot of experience with using management systems, whether it be for their job or even in their personal lives. So we did spend a lot of time training them on how to use a system and what does it mean to, to be able to log in and enter data and retract data, uh, run reports, items like that. Uh, connectivity was an issue, but Heifer did have a, a, a mandate through, uh, through the development of these systems that we would work on moving uh, 
and improving uh, the internet connectivity for our field offices. So we, we made that a high priority throughout the development of at least PPMIS. Uh, nowadays we are pretty well off for the most part. Um, connectivity is not a big issue for us because we heavily involved uh, making improvements in that during uh, some of those phases. Great, thanks, Stephen. That actually uh, answers a couple of questions that came in about um, connectivity issues. So thank you. Um, let me see. Uh, another question is um, how this system relates to other enterprise systems. So um, is Kimetrica or the PPMIS, is this your, your primary MIS system on the project level, or do you do you have other systems on top of this? Uh, and, and if there are other systems, are the systems linked or integrated? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, well, the PPMIS at it, on, in its time and now Kimetrica, those are definitely the primary systems for project management. Uh, we have, um, however, Heifer is going through the, the, the implementation also of enterprise Global systems. Global yeah. systems, and I'll let Stephen talk about the integration with other systems. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think starting with PPMIS, we really attempted to make uh, these systems the system of record for our pro uh, project and program management information. Uh, Heifer has gone through the last few years of moving to four core global systems, and, and Cometrica is one of those systems. Uh, we've also gone through the, the work in the last few months of migrating the data from PPMIS into Cometrica because we felt that we needed to bring the historical information in also. Uh, so we are also working with other uh, projects to where Cometrica will tie in with our other global systems including our financial and uh, uh, revenue uh, donor engagement systems currently. Perfect. Thank you, Stephen. Um, the next questions uh, relate to the Kimetrica system, and I know you're, um, you're still rolling these out, but, but hopefully you'll be able to address these. So first um, is, the first question is if you could elaborate a bit more on what you're hoping that Kimetrica could solve that the other systems that you de developed couldn't address, um, and then sort of related whether the solutions that you've used um, provide for developing visual analytics, dashboards, etc., or whether you need to rely on other tools such as Tableau to to get that functionality. Okay. Yeah. So uh, one of the one of the needs after we had PPMIS was uh, definitely a project management. Uh, with uh, PPMIS, we were still um, creating project documents and uh, tracking project information outside the system. But when it was time for us to enter that information, we would have it in the system. But it was not something that we could use as a tool in our day-to-day -to, -day to ensure that the project was on track according to the plans. So that was one of the, of the main uh, needs that the organization was looking for when we decided to move with Kimetrica. And um, plans, again, uh, we mean plans on budget, plans on scope, and plans as on activities. So those three things were, were one of the main criteria to select the solution. And also on the m and &E side, on the m and &E side, the previous solutions were not able to develop a custom forms. So um, again, it was just... Um, reporting on mandatory items, if you will, versus something that would allow you to do data collection. Data collection and analysis, tracking of your indicators, comparing progress of your, of your indicators value versus the plan, and uh, some analytical functions as, uh, as well. Um, like I mentioned, you, in Kimetrica you're able to uh, create the algorithms to calculate at least the indicators that you have been entered in your project. As far as uh, visualization, Kimetrica also offers um, dashboards at a project level that will show, that shows 
the um, performance of these indicators over time. Okay, great. Um, these, these questions that I'm about to ask are more on the M&E side as well. Um, so first, uh, can the system capture higher level outcomes such as survival rates or income increases? And if so, how? Um, and then along, along the same lines perhaps is how did you engage in training so that staff moved from outputs-based reporting to results-based reporting? Um, did, you develop, did you develop an assessment tool that uh, Heifer might be able to share? So I think, uh, okay, I think I'll start with, um, with the first one, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, the system can accommodate for whatever, whatever indicator or information needs are out there. However, the critical thing is to, to have that clearly defined before doing it, right? So uh, the, for, at the project, on the project side, it's important to identify those indicators. Since project, at the project development stage, uh, to have clarity on what exactly you're going to track, and that will be translated into the m and &E section. And then you can develop forms and questions for data collection. You can do data collection uh, at different levels. Uh, you can use the system to capture or, or to collect that data in the field. By the way, it also offers an offline uh, solution for data collection, so there's no, the staff can go to the field with a mobile device, uh, capture the data, and then come back to the office and just synchronize the data. Um, that, that's, an, that's one option, or it can also be just entered from external, uh, external sources. It doesn't have to everything come through the, uh, through the solution. Um, the second question was um, related on how, how we transition from activities to outcome level. I think the effort has been evolving or changing significantly over the past three years or so. And uh, it all started with the, the development of Heifer's theory of change. And with that, uh, Heifer Um, summarize or, or try to capture all the different interventions that, that we offer in all the different locations to show the core business of HEFR or the, core, or the essence of HEFR. And uh, so we capture, HEFR works in five different areas which are income, food security, environment, women empowerment, and social capital. And then through, through the development of HEFR's theory of change, uh, some agency level measures were also developed, and that was and that was um, uh, that was key to transition from from that activity level to a more outcome level. But that, all that happened, regardless the system development. So I think it's important to to keep in mind that uh, the technology will not only you know drive these changes, it also has to come from, from uh, a change in the organization and in the culture. Thanks, Ileana. Um, these questions now that I'm going to ask go back to the establishment of the system itself and uh, they relate to the different sort of roles and responsibilities for developing and rolling out a system like this. Um, so one question is, what are the, the roles in implementing and maintaining the system? So for example, who inputs the data, who manages uh, the system, who, who trains staff on the system, and then who's using the data or consuming the data from the system? So um, there's a lot there, so I'll let you answer that first before I go on to the other questions. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> so the system allows for different roles. Um, you want to speak about the roles? Yeah, I'll speak briefly. Um, one of the things we did when we approached PPMIS was we we attempted to make this a collaborative effort of development to where the pm and &E team and the IT team both worked hand in hand. Not one owned it more than the other, and we were both equal stakeholders in that to try to make the system a success. Uh, 
going forward, uh, one of the things we tried to do was build in, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, different levels of access where it depended on what the job responsibility was. We had we built in a role-based security within PPMIS to where you'd have your field data entry people, you would have your field approval staff, uh, you would then have your area level that were over the, the different countries within an area who had additional access to review and approve certain reports and information. Uh, and then we also had administration uh, roles within the systems to allow for the PM&E team who were considered the owner of the system and manage the data and the system itself as a whole would have access to add users, remove users, give them different access, uh, things like that. Just briefly to add to that, um, the, the fact that we had different roles such as the data entry and the approval and, uh, or different levels of approval and revision within the system, that, uh, that created a check and balance. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, you know keep the, the data under control in itself. So and help with the QA exactly. Yeah. So on top of that, uh, the QA process that we had throughout the life of PPMIS of this system that definitely helped because that that could help us to control. Okay, and then the sort of add-on question to that is um, sort of what what support Port needs to be in place um, to, or how how do you manage the support to to countries? Is is everything coming from you guys at the headquarters level? Um, do you have a a team who's who's fully dedicated to this? Do you have staff at the field level, IT staff at the field level that can? Um, help your, your program staff with this or or is training from the headquarters level on the system enough to, to get things going? Uh, yeah, we had a support team that supported the application. Uh, while not exclusively, that was one of their primary responsibilities. Uh, any issues that came in, came in through uh, IT's or tech support's ticketing system. So staff in the field or here at HQ could open a, a support ticket regarding PPMS. Uh, that came into a queue that was managed by not only somebody on the IT side, but also somebody from the PM&E side. So they both could see the tickets and determine if it's a technical problem or if it's more of a training issue about how to, how to use the system or how to manage the system. Uh, from there, if, if, nobody could, if we could not answer the question in-house, uh, we then had a different ticketing system that we then went to the developer that would help us with ongoing issues as we went through the development and the implementation and the support of the systems. And uh, we do that to this day, even with the uh, Geometric, I believe. Yeah. Great. Um, and we're at time, but I'll just sneak in one more, one more question uh, that's a quick one, hopefully. Does Chemetrica allow for qualitative data collection and analysis as well as quantitative data? Uh, there's a, uh, it allows for qualitative data. You can always enter qualitative data, but it, you cannot an analyze. Uh, the system is definitely more towards the quantitative part of it. Uh, okay, perfect. Um, so bef thank you, Ileana and Stephen, for this great presentation. Um, and just, I want to conduct a, a quick poll, if possible, before people leave. Um, if you're interested in more webinars like this, can you just uh, raise your hand, hit the raise your hand button, just to get a sense of that. I'll give you a moment. All right. Uh, seems pretty, pretty universal. Okay. Uh, I think about half the half the group raised their hand. Um, so that's that's wonderful. We'll definitely look into putting more events on like this. If you uh, would be willing to present and share your own system, please get in touch with me, um, and I'll I'll try to organize more of those. Uh, so thank you all again for joining. Ileana, Stephen, thanks so much again for your, your openness and for sharing your, your lessons learned. Thank you. Thank you.